This video is made for adult collectors because this movie is 16 years old. God, I hate saying that. This toy. It's so good, but also old enough to have been outshined by loads of other figures. I'm starting in truck mode because the robot mode is very first movie, but the truck looks nice. Ish. The gap on the back does bug me. Gaps don't usually b bother me, you guys know that, but this one kind of, it looks weird. And then the blue up front, that also gets me. It's more in service of the robot mode, which I guess is fine, but the blue really breaks up that nice yellow fade to red that they got on the front. This is the Takara one, and I don't know if there's any difference between decos, but it is really nice. Speaking of Takara, Takara Japan, Japan Bai. This video is brought to you by Bai. Um, I got this from them. I got this sealed actually on their site for like 30 bucks Canadian. Uh, shipping was on this was going to be 25 bucks, so that ends up being 55 bucks, which is not bad. That's shipping and the service fees. Um, but Bai is a Japanese proxy buying service that allows you to buy things that usually aren't available anywhere else and they'll ship it to you from stores that don't ship outside of Japan, like Yahoo Japan, Mercari. They've just added eBay, but it's not available for people like me yet, so I'm just waiting. Um, I got this, I got the, this little book, which we'll get its own video. I got Revel Tech Optimus Prime, who is actually wonderful. And then I got this. This is an animated blackout. This was cancelled over here, and I have one now, and I'm very happy. It's not a good toy, but it is really cool to have. So definitely check them out. Links in the description down below. Um, I will say, please, I say this all the time, budget for shipping. The shipping and the service fees do creep up on you every now and again when you buy something really big. So just be wary of that. The farther away you live from Japan, the more expensive it is going to be. And right now, bai has got this sort of discount campaign that uh, goes up until the end of March, where you get 80% off your international shipping for new users and an additional 5% off from Mercari. So if you buy anything from Mercari and ship it directly, you get like 80%, well, 85 technically percent off your shipping, which would drastically help because shipping can get very expensive. But sometimes the thing that you find on there is so rare that it is worth the shipping and service fees like Animated Blackout was. So yeah, thank you very much Bai for sponsoring today's video. Now back to the actual toy because that's what you're all here for. If I sound a little congested, um, it's very cold in the house. So the truck is very large. Like it's a bit larger than the Revenge of the Fallen one in some places, but it also weighs a lot. Like lifting weights with this thing is something I could totally see. The finish, I, I gotta go back to the finish. It looks awesome. The lines and the paint are very pleasing to look at. Although I don't know what this black stuff is on my copy. There were no rubber bands on this part, so I don't know what that is. I'm not 100% sure. Someone just sort of like sneezed on my figure and put it in the box. The cannon does store on the back there, but if you don't like it, it is removable, which just leaves more of a gap if you remove it. And that kind of looks ugly. Put the gun back on. He does make noise in this mode. He makes the horn noise when you press this button on the top so he can alert people when he goes to run them over. The batteries are stored in such an amazing spot. The gas tanks on the side are literally the battery compartments. They power the toy from the gas canisters. That's awesome. Like, you know, powering a truck with gas, powering the toy with the batteries and the gas, it's cool. But that's all the truck really does, so robot time. Transformation doesn't really know how to get out of its own way. There's a lot of times where you do a step in the wrong order and you have to backtrack like five steps to do the one you missed, but like, it feels more natural doing what you were doing before, so backtracking feels very weird. It's a very strange transformation experience. Everything moves in chunks though, so it's not without its satisfaction. Especially going back into truck mode and getting everything lined up in an order. Once you like solidify everything, it's really satisfying. But for the robot, you end up tabbing everything in and it leads to this. This is an Optimus Prime with a truck hanging off of him. He has coattails. It's weird. First, let's show off the head reveal part, because that's pretty swick. Swick? What the hell does swick mean? It's pretty sick. You flip a switch and... That's the only noise this part makes, and my assumption as to why there's no Peter Cullen in this is either A, it cost too much to get him into the toy at the time, because the movie hadn't actually come out yet, or B, 
because there was no one cast yet, so they had no clue what he was going to sound like. I believe Michael Bay wanted Liam Neeson at the beginning to be Optimus, so that would have been weird. He really is a chonkster. The whole back of the truck is just hanging off the legs. He has these fin things on the back, and his arms are just bricks with fists on them. At first glance, it's really not the best looking thing in the world, but at the same time, it's now that level of nostalgic to most that we look past that and appreciate the toy for what it is and when it came out. Because this came out right after Cybertron, and this definitely feels like a Cybertron toy. Like, it it works, feels, and transforms just like how a Cybertron toy would. I will say the figure doesn't like to stand sometimes because there's too much weight on the top, and he has ball-jointed feet, so they aren't the most stable thing in the world. Fortunately, the Revenge of the Fallen version fixed that with the way it did the ball joints and the feet with that little peg sticking out, so... They, they at least learn from their mistake. There's a lot of tooling on display, enough to make it feel like a movie toy, but also just not enough to be pleasing to look at. The forearms especially, I'm not a big fan of the design of how they tooled the, the surface, because it's very flat, and they just sort of put thin lines around everything and then painted it all, and it doesn't look the best. The legs though, I like how this is part separation and not paint, meaning A, no chipping, and B, the separation is more defined and lifelike. It looks realistic. It's actual transformation parts in there, so it's really cool. The head is very rounded, but still looks like Optimus Prime. I would be careful rotating it though, because wires and lights and all that, but it's a nice head sculpt. The cannon can flip over his hand by pulling a switch and BAM! Gun hand. I'm glad it doesn't immediately fire as soon as you flip it open. Lots of Unicron Trilogy toys did that, and it made storing the missiles harder, but here, nah, manual fire. Thank you! So his articulation is one of those. He has all the joints, but they're not very useful because of how top heavy he is. So the head can rotate, but like I said, I only really go like a little bit. Uh, it's also worth noting that it does click into place at the center so that you know where the center is when you push it down. Because if you push it down like this, it's not gonna go, right? So I like how they, how they did that. Uh, shoulders. On a nice ratchet, they can go around. These are on a hinge and a ball joint so they can get out of the way. Again, another nice ratchet. You have a, um, so you have a swivel right here. So you got, well, blah, blah, blah. let's start with the elbow first. You got elbow joint here and elbow joint at the bottom, right? But it swivels here. So if you want the swivel to be below the, or above the elbow, sorry, you only can bend it 90 degrees and then twist the arm. But if you want to do the full double bend, the swivel's in a, a weird spot. So just, just make note of that. But Wicked ratchet. You've got, there he goes. You got a thumb and individual fingers, which is something I wasn't, I, you would never expect on a toy. Like there's no wrist swivel. Like it doesn't turn, but he can do that, I guess. He's not five millimeter compatible, but you could kind of sort of shove five millimeter weapons into his hands and just have him grip them. So that, that works. That's tarantula saw, but that works. Nothing at the waist, however, there is this transformation joint that you can use as sort of like a backwards ab crunch, I guess. Like an arcing back if you need to, but then he's just gonna do that. Legs can go forward, they can go back. Not that far though, because of the wheels. However, you can unclip the wheel assembly. Ah, oh, I just ripped my nail. Oh, ow. Ow, that hurt. Where was I? Oh yeah, legs can go back that far with the thing folded back. Uh, this on its own can bend here. You got a thigh rotation, well, above the knee rotation, I should say. Um, that's a really loud ratchet. The knees only bend about that far. Eh. And then you have a full range. I'm just gonna lie him down. You got full range of um, Ankle motion here that's out of focus, there we go. Full range of ankle motion here, including pivot, swivel, forward and back because of how his feet are designed. Now, one thing to note, as you can sort of see what's happening here, uh, the shoulders like to come untabbed a lot and these like to move around a lot. They're supposed to tab in, but like they're not the most secure things in the world, um, which is a, a really annoying and then these constantly coming undone. Also quite annoying. 
Yeah. Let's get him standing up straight. So, like, trying to get him into a, like, really epic pose, you can't really do. Granted, where did the Revenge of the Fallen one go? Granted, you couldn't really get this guy into an epic pose either just because of his limitations, and they both sort of have similar limitations, top-heavy, fall over a lot, weird joint poses and, like, weird weapon placement limiting their pose ability. It's unfortunate. Like, they did improve that over time, and now we have, like, the Studio Series ones and this thing that can achieve really awesome poses. But, yeah, he, he likes to fall a lot. That's my biggest complaint. And the shoulders kind of limits what you can do articulation-wise. So yeah, it's a decent enough figure and a pretty all right time messing with, but it's presence, stature, and nostalgia make it such a treat to have and put on that leader class shelf I've got. Only a few more and I'll, I'll have it complete. I just need Ironhide, Starscream, Grimlock, The Last Night Megatron, and Dragonstorm. God, I hate, I hate Dragonstorm. <laughs> oh, and it's such annoying, it's so annoying because you gotta... Be careful, because some copies will have melted heads. Ah, oh, I hate Dragonstorm. <laughs> I say buy one. Not not Dragonstorm, this thing. You can get him for relatively cheap in a lot of places locally. I lucked out with my sealed Takara one on buy, and that's the one I wanted. So if you're looking for a sealed Takara one, definitely go check them out. I've seen a bunch of them there. But like, they're not that hard to come by a first movie leader prime. Now what I gotta do is find the UK Nightwatch Prime, because that's the rare Nightwatch Prime variant. Because there's different colors on the gray or whatever. So... I need to get one of those still, but I would highly recommend buying one of these and definitely go check out buy links in the description. But that's been my look at first movie leader class Optimus Prime. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>